Hello and good morning dear students and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. Let us take a look at the articles we have for today's Hindu news analysis. The first article, in fact it is a combination of three articles. A very important news right now is that there is a war that has been declared between Israel and Hamas which is a Palestinian militant group. So this war has been declared yesterday. According to the latest reports, there are already 480 casualties, out of which 250 Israeli and 230 Palestinian people, they have passed away already less than 24 hours since the war has started. So there are three very important articles in the newspaper today. The first is a general article, Israel at war as Hamas attack leaves 200 people dead. Then India stand on this war, how our Prime Minister has responded to this attack by Hamas on Israel and the counter attacks by Israel on the Palestinian region, specifically the Gaza Strip. Also, there is an explanatory article as to why did Hamas launch a surprise attack on Israel? Why this timing is so important? What all events it led to? The confidence amongst the Hamas that even though they are less technologically advanced, but still they had to attack Israel. The second article is about plastic pollution. How plastics affect our daily life. Okay. Then in the prelims bite section, there are two articles regarding the security of India. The first article regarding the Indo-Tibetan border police force. The second one is regarding the territorial army. So both of them, they are mostly about how we are trying to protect our interest at the Indo-Chinese border. The third one is regarding the Gangetic Dolphins. Yesterday itself, the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh has declared the Gangetic Dolphins as the state aquatic animals. Already they are the national aquatic animals. But there are certain problems associated with conservation of these Gangetic Dolphins specifically related to the canals, the irrigational canals. So what that is, we'll take a look here. And the last article is regarding a malaria vaccine, a less expensive malaria vaccine which will cost somewhere between $2 to $4 per dose. It has been developed and it has been given a preliminary approval by the World Health Organization for usage in the countries which have malaria as an endemic disease. So let us move to our first topic, the war in Israel and Palestine. Okay. So yesterday in the evening, that must be somewhere early morning on a Saturday in Israel, Hamas, which is a militant group residing in the Gaza Strip, the Hamas group launched more than 5,000 rockets to attack the border regions between Gaza Strip and Israel. So there was a lot of casualty. The militants, they also entered the territory of Israel and there were also reports that many of the Israeli officials as well as the citizens, they have been abducted. They have been abducted and Hamas has declared that the numbers of officials and the citizens that have been abducted, they are enough to, to, to be considered as a ransom for removal of Palestinian people from the Israeli jails. So they'll use this as a ransom and they will try to get free the Palestinians that are residing right now in the Israeli jails. So Israel also declared, Israel declared that they are now at war against the Palestinian militant group Hamas. They declared they're not at war against entire Palestine, only the Palestinian militant group Hamas and they declared this operation, this counter operation as Operation Iron Sword. So this question can also be asked in your prelims, what is Operation Iron Sword? Now according to Hamas, these attacks are driven. Why are they attacking it? 
these attacks are because Israel in the past few years, especially since 2021, has escalated its attacks on the Palestinians, specifically in the West Bank region. So, Palestinian territory, it is divided into one is Gaza Strip, other is West Bank. Coincidentally, West Bank region is on the eastern side and the Gaza Strip region is on the western side. So, Hamas has said that this attack on Israel is a retaliatory attack against Israel's attack on Palestinians living in West Bank, Jerusalem and against the Israeli treatment of Palestinians which are in Israeli jails. Now, the history of this conflict, it goes back to many years. Now, Jerusalem, it is considered as a place where many religions, they came into being, be it Christianity, Islam and Judaism. So historically, before Christianity came into being, this region, it was inhabited by Jews, later on the Christians and then the Islamic people. Now what happened is that the Jews, they were driven away from this region at an historical dates. However, after the defeat of Ottoman Empire, which was primarily an Islamic empire, after the defeat of the Ottoman Empire in the World War I, this region of which was called Palestine, this entire region was called Palestine. The Palestine, it became a mandate of British government. So Britain, it got the custody of Palestine. Now Palestine during that time, it was Arab majority and Jewish minority state. You can see over here in 1947, what was the status? The Jewish settlements, they were very small in number and very scattered. The rest was Palestinian land. Now what happened is that during and just before the World War II, there was a lot of hate against the Jewish people in Europe, specifically in German occupied regions. So Jew people, they started exhorting out of Europe and they all of them, they fled to Palestine. Most of them, they started fleeing to Palestine. Now, this region of Jerusalem, it was historically considered as the home of the Jews. So, when they came back to Palestine, they realized that they now want a motherland for themselves. They do not want to stay living scattered all across the world. They want a place which they can call a motherland. And from historical records, this region was the motherland, the historical motherland of the Jewish people. So in 1920s and 1940s, the Jew people, they flew or fled from Europe to Palestine. And then they started demanding a motherland in the region. In 1947, the United Nations, it voted on this aspect. There was a lot of pressure from both the Palestinian side as well as the Jewish side, the Arab side and the Jewish side, that who to whom this place should belong. Because the population of the Jew people was also consistently increasing in this region. So, in 1947, there was a voting in the United Nations to divide Palestine into two separate states. The two-state solution. So, two separate states will be created. One will be for the Jew people, Israel, and one will be for the Arab people, that is the Palestinians. Now, the Jewish people, they agreed to this because they were finally getting their motherland. However, the Arab people, they were totally against it because it was their land now and they did not want to let go even a tiny bit of their land. So what happened is that this decision was not implemented. Now under this decision, please note Jerusalem, the Jerusalem city, which is a holy city for all these three religions, it was to be kept under international administration and it would not have gone to either Israel or Palestine. However, this was not implemented. 
then in 1948 what happened the british power was already weakening all across the world the british they were withdrawing away from many countries india also got its independence only in 1947 when the british they had already been weakened now british they started withdrawing from all across the world they withdrew from the palestine region which was their mandate as well so as they withdrew the jewish leaders they declared the founding of the state of israel in the palestinian region and united states of america which had a huge lobby of the jewish people it recognized this state of israel on the same day in may 1948 when it was declared later on many of the allies of united states of america they also starting give started given recognition to the state of israel now the arab states they were very angry and that is why there were multiple wars in this region with involvement of many arab states syria egypt jordan lebanon and so on and there were multiple wars the first war was as soon as there was declaration of israel now this war it was held in 1948 you can see the un plan the un plan wanted this kind of a division of palestine and israel however because of the war a lot of this region which was to be considered under the Palestinian land by the UN plan, it went to Israel. With every consecutive war that occurred, the amount of land with Israel, it kept on increasing. Okay. In 1956, there was raid of Suez Canal, the Suez War. Why? Because Egypt nationalized the Suez Canal. And they did not allow any ships of Israel to pass through here. So a combined force of Israel, Britain and France, externally supported by USA, they attacked this region. And they also captured some portions of the Sinai Peninsula. Israel also captured certain portions of uh, Sinai Peninsula that belongs to Egypt. Then in 1967, again, we had the Six-Day War and the Yom Kippur War. Yom Kippur is a very holy day for the Jewish people. In 1973, the Yom Kippur War. Now, many people, many experts are saying that this current war that Hamas has started against Israel, it reminds very much of the Yom Kippur, Kippur War. Because Yom Kippur, it was a very holy day for the Israeli people, for the Jewish people. Most of them, they were at their homes and there were sudden attacks. Similarly, Saturday is a holy day, considered as a holy day by the Jewish people. And again, on this holy day itself, there were attacks by the Hamas on Israel. Now, why has Hamas attacked right now? The major city of Israel that has experienced this wrath is the city of Siderot, S-D-E-R-O-T, where, from where many of the civilians and the military people as well as the Israeli officials, they have been abducted. Okay, many have been killed, many have been abducted and many other horrific acts they have been committed, the videos of which are already viral on various social media platforms. Now you can see Israel over here. Israel, it is bordered by Syria over here. There is Jordan, there is Lebanon and Egypt. Now all these countries in the past, they have come together and attacked Israel in the favor of a Palestinian state. Now Palestine, the portions of Palestine, you will see this is West Bank, which is on the eastern side. And this is the Gaza Strip from where the attacks were committed. Now, why has Hamas attacked right now? See, the Palestinian and Israel relations over the period of time, they have been consistently deteriorating. There were some efforts by countries like USA to bring together the leaders of Palestine as well as Israel on the same platform and try to build a consensus for peace. However, over the time, this has been reducing 
there is no peace between the two nations. So, Palestine-Israel relationships, they have been deteriorating, especially since 2021. Israel has been carrying out many military raids in the West Bank region. There have also been declarations that in certain border regions of the West Bank, the Israeli settlements, they are being created. So, that is a very big point of contention between Palestine as well as Israel. Now, the public of Palestine, it is very much agitated. It is agitated against the government of the West Bank, the Palestinian government which, is, which has gotten recognition by certain agencies. See, Gaza Strip, it has the Hamas which is ruling it and Palestine is ruled by a Palestinian and the West Bank region is ruled by a Palestinian government. Now, what is happening is that the people in the West Bank region as well as in the Gaza Strip region, they are very much angry with the Palestinian government because they are not doing anything against Israel. Okay, so the Palestinian people, they are angry against Israel itself as well as the government of the Palestine. So the Hamas, they have identified this opportune time where there is so much anger amongst the Palestinian people and now they have attacked because they now want to emerge as the sole pole of the Palestinian cause. They want to declare that this Palestinian government which is ruling the West Bank region, it is not in favor of the Palestinian people. So there is a political angle. Hamas wants to emerge out as the sole pole, the single savior of the Palestinian cause. Apart from that, within Israel also there is a lot of turbulence going on. There are a lot of difficult times going on. Right now, Israel has one of its most right-wing government. Now, this government is trying very hard to get more and more power. So, recently in the National Assembly of Israel known as Neset, A, a proposal was passed. Now, this proposal, it removed the power of the judiciary of the Israeli government to have an oversight power on the decisions of the government. So, the judiciary of Israel will no longer be able to keep an oversight or question any decision by the Israeli government, by the Israeli Neset. So that is one turbulence and because of which a lot of protests they are going on is in Israel. So Hamas believed that because of these protests, because of these internal problems within Israel, Israel is at a fragile stage and this would be the most opportune time to attack Israel. Also another factor is there. Now you know that there are three major powers in the Middle East, that we say the West Asia, we have Israel, we have Saudi Arabia and we have Iran, right? Now Saudi Arabia and Iran, their relationship has been somewhat mended very recently because of Chinese intervention. The Saudi Arabia and Israel relationship, now USA has been trying very hard because both are allies of USA. USA has been trying very hard to improve the relations between Saudi Arabia as well as Israel. However, in the recent years, what has happened? The attention of United States of America, it has moved from the Middle East, Middle East region to what? To the Pacific, Indo-Pacific region as well as Eastern Europe. Why Indo-Pacific? Because of China. Why Eastern Europe? Because of Russia. So, US attention has also moved. So, that is one thing that is happening. However, Israel and Saudi Arabia, they are themselves without any external intervention trying to improve the relations amongst each other. So, they are, there was a recent declaration that they are in advanced stages of normalization of the talks. Now, Saudi Arabia, 
it has the name arab in it palestine is what for arab people now if saudi arabia comes close to israel what will happen hamas is scared or even many palestinian people are scared that if the relations between saudi arabia and israel improve this will lead to what this will lead to a decline in importance in the saudi arabia diplomacy for the state of palestine okay so the palestine cause it will diminish it its importance will decline at a global stage iran also does not want this to happen because if two of the powers will combine it will be left it will be left out so iran is supporting the hamas in its efforts against israel so hamas is supported by both iran as well as lebanon so these are the reasons why hamas thought that this is the most opportune time to attack israel because now that israel has done a counter attack that would mean they are attacking the arab people and these negotiations will now be further delayed now what is india's stance now india the prime minister of india he has said in a statement that india stands in solidarity with israel in this difficult time india knows the pain of terrorism and one of the basic principle why india and israel they have such close relations is because both of them have been victims of terrorism so india has explicitly stated that these are terrorist attacks and we are completely in conjunction or in support of israel when it comes to palestine and israel we have adopted a de hyphenation policy we will be supporting the cause of the oppressed people of palestine but we will be also keeping our relations with israel so this is a de hyphenation policy also india has always stated that violence cannot be a solution for any problem so instead of committing terrorism acts of terrorism both the parties should come together and peacefully try to resolve their differences so this is the stand of india when it comes to this war okay so just to summarize almost 450 sorry 480 people have died because of an attack by hamas they launched 5000 rockets on israel on the western side of israel that and they have also abducted many officials as well as civilians in the counter attack israel it released its operation iron sword now this problem between palestine and israel it has historical connotations it has been going on for many years and it specially escalated after year 1948 when the jewish people who were living in the region they declared a separate jewish state of israel and it got recognition by many powerful countries at that time okay now hamas the reason why hamas thought it's the opportune time was because of the anger amongst the palestinian people both against the west bank government as well as against the israeli government second there is weakness within the israel there are multiple protests that are going on in israel so hamas thought that israel is currently weaker and third the deal the normalization of talks between saudi arabia as well as israel hamas does not want this to happen so india stance has been that india condemns any kind of terrorist attacks and stands in solidarity with israel okay so now we move to our next topic the next topic is important for your gs3 this article has been written in the hindu which talks about how the plastics they have started affecting our daily life now plastics microplastics they have now been found even in human blood as well as in human 
placenta. So that means that these plastics that were created to resolve our problems, they have now become one of our biggest problems. The United Nations Environment Program has stated very recently that every day around 2000 garbage trucks full of plastic, it is dumped in the water in the hydrosphere of the world. That includes the oceans, the rivers and the lakes. Every year, 19 to 23 million tons of plastic waste, it leaks into the river systems, it leaks into the oceans, the seas and so on. Now where it all started and how is it going? In 1907, for the very first time, a Belgian scientist known as Leo Bekeland, he synthesized the first plastic known as bakelite. You need not know how he synthesized it, just know that it was known as bakelite. He mass produced this plastic and started marketing it. Now since 1907, there have been various types of other plastics that have been created, especially from the fossil fuels and they have been extensively marketed for many aspects. So right now, what has happened that plastics, they are now found everywhere from your houses to the Chandrayaan. Everything has some amount of plastic in itself. Now, even microplastics, microplastics, they are now found even in the remotest part of the oceans. What are microplastics? The plastic pieces which are less than 5 mm. So, these are micro plastics. They are now found even in the remotest part of the ocean. What is the most remote point of oceans? It is known as Point Nemo, which is located in Southern Pacific Ocean. Now, even at this point, we where the humans, they are not found, even here we have found plastics. So plastics, as we use more and more plastic, a very small amount of it is recycled or incinerated, that is burnt away. Most of it, it gets, it ends up in the soil or in the sea and it leads to land degradation or marine pollution. And as I stated, it is now being found even in the human body. There have been proven results where microplastics, they have been found in human blood as well as human placenta. Now, according to reports by International Union for Conservation of Nature, 14 million plastic waste, it enters ocean annually mainly from land-based sources. Now, there are two major sources for plastic pollution. One is the land-based sources, whatever plastic that we are using in our daily life, ranging from plastic straws to big packaging material, everything eventually, most of it, a major portion of it, eventually it gets dumped in the oceans. Second is the ocean-based sources. Now, here also the role of human beings is important. The fishing nets, the fishing gear, the packaging material within the ships, everything gets dumped into the oceans. So, these are the two major sources. Now, plastic waste, it forms 80% of the entire marine debris. So, you can understand that what is the level of plastic pollution in the world. Now, there is a place, there is a particular concept that is called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Now, Great Pacific Garbage Patch, it has, it is subdivided into two major patches of garbage in the Northern Pacific Ocean. One is Eastern Garbage Patch. The other is western garbage patch. If we entirely combine the entire amount of waste that is in the great Pacific garbage patch, it is the size of it is three times the size of the 
country France. So this is the size of it. However, please note that this denotes only 3% of the total ocean plastic pollution. I know I am giving out a lot of facts. Just try to remember whichever ones you can. Because if you substantiate your answers with facts in the mains exam, you will definitely have an edge against another person who has not provided the facts. Now, what is the impact of all this plastic pollution? First, there is impact on land and marine ecosystems. You must have read about many reports where many birds, birds they got entangled, many fish they got entangled in plastic waste. Sometimes what might happen, they might ingest these plastics. In the various urban centers, many a times the cows, they are also known to ingest these plastics which is very much toxic for their bodies. Even in the oceans, we have seen that the fish, many fish that have been caught, they have been found, there are traces of plastics in their bodies. So, ingestion, suffocation. Now, very recently I saw something, there was a dog a stray dog and that stray dog had a plastic bottle on his head. There was, a, the bottle had a broad mouth and somehow while searching for food, that dog, it, that plastic bottle got stuck in, in the neck area of that dog. When I tried to help that dog, the dog was running away. It was very much scared. So this is just one example. There are so many land and the ocean based animal that get suffocated because of getting entangled in these plastic wastes. There is also an impact on human health and food security. Now when we consume fish which have consumed plastics, what will happen? These plastics they will enter our body as well. With regards to food security, when we already know that the fish they might have particles of plastic in them, we know that the quality of our food is compromised now. People, when they know about it, when the awareness regarding this might increase, what will happen? People will try to avoid food from such sources, food from oceans, marine food. They might start avoiding it and that will again lead to what? Food insecurity. The demand for other types of foods will increase. So accessibility and affordability of other types of foods, they will be put into question mark. There, will, there is also impact on tourism and the shipping industry. The ship propellers, they might get entangled in these ways in say discarded fishing net. The propellers, they might get entangled and there will be an increased cost of maintenance of these ships. The tourists would not want to go to the regions where there is a huge menace of plastic pollution in the coastal regions. Then global warming. When these plastics, see plastics, they are mostly made up of fossil fuels. So, they are carbon based, they are basically polymers. So what happens is that when these plastics, they are not properly disposed of, they are left out in the open, they start to degrade. Now as they degrade, they will be releasing this carbon that is present in them. They will be releasing it in the form of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, like methane and so on. So this is again adding to our global warming problems. Next. The problem of the microplastics. The majority of marine plastic, because of the action of the sea waves and ocean currents, it gets broken down into smaller pieces and it gets converted into microplastics. Now, bigger pieces of plastics, they are easier to track. Why? Because of their size, they are easier to be spotted in the oceans. However, these microplastics, they are very difficult to track as well as study. 
we do not have an exact amount exact number on how much microplastic it exists in the oceans all the numbers that we get they are just ballpark figures and the actual number it might be much larger they can easily enter the food chain the small fish can easily ingest this which will be ingested further by the bigger fish which might get ingested by even even the human beings so microplastics because of their smaller size they can be easily ingested and they can enter the food chain also these plastics these small particles of plastics they have high affinity towards other intoxicants they attract other type of intoxicants so what happens is that when a small fish is ingesting this microplastic along with that microplastic it is ingesting a lot of other intoxicants as well and they can then enter the human body as well causing further problems to human health now what is the way forward see earlier when we did not have much knowledge about human impact on environment what we used to do we used to adopt the policy of use and throw we used to use the material and then dispose it off that is the worst strategy that can be adopted for waste management later on with the increase in our consciousness we realize that we need to adopt reduce reuse and recycle strategy we need to reduce first we need to reduce the demand for these products for the plastic products whatever we have already in our houses we should keep on reusing it and once it becomes difficult to reuse that item we need to start recycling those items however please note that it when it comes to microplastics or composite materials like your tetra packs which have layers of plastics papers everything within itself it becomes very difficult to recycle these types of materials also recycling it requires a huge amount of energy okay so what is the best solution refuse rethink redesign and conserve refuse the use of which is very akin to reduce refuse whenever you are going to the markets carry your own bag do not ask for a poly bag already the single use plastics they have been completely eliminated in india they have been banned in india see they have been banned what is the implementation that is a different part they have been banned by the government of india so you need to refuse the use of these plastics you need to rethink and a redesign what does that mean that instead of using plastics you need to think what other alternatives can be used nowadays if you see if many e-commerce companies instead of using the bubble wraps to protect your material they have started using paper perforated paper okay it is very fluffy in nature and it is being used to protect your material as it goes from the producer side to you so instead of bubble wraps that are plastic we have started using paper another alternative can be jute so we need to redesign our systems in such a manner that we start eliminating the plastics from the very base so this will be the best way forward this will be the worst disposal is the worst then comes the three r's reduce reuse recycle and the best way out is rethinking and redesigning okay so just to summarize in this article we talked about how united nations environment program has said that every year 2000 every day 2000 garbage truck worth of plastics they enter the aquatic systems we try to understand how this plastic journey started in 1907 with the creation of bakelite and now everything that we use it has plastics in some or the other format 
Now, plastics, they have started affecting not just human health, but also the biodiversity, the ecosystems, the marine, as well as the land-based ecosystems as well. The best solution to this problem is what? The best solution is to rethink and redesign so as to eliminate the use of plastics at the base level itself. Okay. So with that, we come to an end to this article. Next, we have the prelims bite section. The first article is ITBP, Indo-Tibetan Border Police. It is on alert and it is conducting patrols along the China border. Now, for the past few years, the tensions at the Indo-China borders, they have been increasing. Recently, what has happened? China has released a latest map of China which has completely included parts of India in Jammu and Kashmir and Arunachal, in Leh and Ladakh and Arunachal Pradesh, okay. So there are a lot of tensions that are going on across the border. So that's why ITBP becomes so important because this particular police force, it was raised in 1962 after the Indochina war in order to take care of the Indochina border okay so itbp it has the prime purpose to take care of the indo china border now a little bit history about itbp it is a central armed police force and it has its own act under which it is working the itbpf act indo tibetan border Border Police Force Act of 1992. Now, it was created back in 1962. However, the act, it came in only 1992. So, for these years, the intervening years, it was under the CRPF Act. Central Reserve Police Force Act. Okay. The nodal ministry for this agency for ITBP is the Ministry of Home Affairs. Now, please note that the ITBP, it is taking care of the Indochina border. Now, Indochina border is where? Along the Himalayas, the Himalayan ranges. So, that is why most of the members of ITBP, they are specialized in one or the other form of mountaineering. In mountaineering, in skiing and so on. So they are very much trained in these kinds of activities because they are along these mountainous tracks. So it is a specialized mountain force. So this is about ITBP. The next article is about territorial army. Now the territorial army has inducted five Chinese language interpreters to call for border talks with China. Here, ITBP is, an, is on alert conducting patrols, okay. So, and here we are preparing ourselves for border talks. While we are protecting the borders, we are also trying to come up with a solution with China for border talks. And for that, the territorial army has inducted five Chinese language interpreters. Now, what is territorial army? Now, territorial army, it is not formal army. It is a part-time voluntary and citizens military reserve force. Military reserve force, voluntary. Any citizen can go and register themselves as a part of the territorial army. In fact, many celebrities, many union and state ministers, they are a part of this territorial army already. Now, this has been created this was created back in 1920s by the British and after the independence what happened a territorial army act of 1948 was passed which allowed for the Indian citizens to become a part of this territorial army. Please note that it is an integral part of the Indian army comes under the administration of Indian army and it provides an opportunity for the general citizens to serve the nation and to support the army in their day-to-day -day working. Okay, so this is the purpose of territorial army. As of now, it has 60 units. 
the territorial army it has 60 different units out of which 14 are deployed in counter insurgency duties at the international border areas and two units, they are present in the Andaman and Nicobar Island group. Now, various ministries, they also have their departmental territorial army battalions. So, these battalions, they are funded by the respective ministry. For example, Ministry of Environment and Forest, it has its own territorial, departmental territorial army. Ministry of Jal Shakti, Ministry of Railways, Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. Now states, they can also demand for certain specific type of territorial armies. For example, the state of Maharashtra. The state of Maharashtra has demanded, has requested for a specific ecological battalion to help the state protect the ecology of the state specifically in the western ghats region okay so the people who will be a part of this ecological battalion of the state of the territorial army for the state of maharashtra they will be working for what ecological conservation efforts okay now recently there have also been guidelines that have been formulated for creating a separate battalion for cyber security. So, Territorial Army, it has developed the guidelines for appointment of various cyber experts as well to further help the Indian Army in their efforts for protecting the country. Now, recent contributions of Territorial Army that you can give as example if you get any question. They were deployed when the Indo-China, they are border relations, they were deteriorating back in 2020. So, there was Operation Snow Leopard. So, the Territorial Army, the various units, they were deployed to support the Indian Army in Eastern Ladakh. In May, in May what happened? The state of Manipur, the crisis in the state of Manipur, it started escalating. So, as this crisis, it started unfolding, the territorial army units, they step, these oil units that belong to the this ministry, these oil units, they stepped in and they protected the various installations, the oil installations in these in this region so that there were no problems regarding the supply of essential petroleum and oil products and refueling of aircrafts in the entire country. So, you can mention these examples as certain recent contributions, as certain case studies related to the territorial army. The next topic is about Gangetic Dolphins. Now, according to a latest study, Gangetic Dolphins, they are getting stuck in the Ganga Ghagra canal system. So, what is happening is that these dolphins, they enter these canals when water is released in these canals, especially after the monsoon season. So, they enter these canals and once the water level of these canals, it reduces, they are left stranded over there. They are left stranded and they can die because of lack of availability of food. They might experience heat waves or people when they might see them, they might also, you know, kind of neglect them or they might cause some harm to them. So, between, according to this study, between 2013 to 2020, there have been 24 rescue operations to rescue the various dolphins that have been stranded or getting stuck in the Ghagra Ganga Canal system. Out of these, 19 were safe. However, 5 of these Gangetic dolphins, they passed away. So, these dams, barrages and canals, they are adversely affecting their habitat, the habitat of these Gangetic dolphins. First, it is creating fragmentation of the habitat. The entire river, they used to live in this entire river earlier, 
बट नाउ वट हेज हैपन्ड अब डैम हैज बीन क्रिएटेड हियर डैम हैज बीन क्रिएटेड हियर तो हैबिटेट इज गेटिंग फ्रैगमेंटेड ऑल्सो वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट द लार्जर animals the larger dolphins and the pregnant females they look for easier prey in the canal systems so they enter these canal systems specifically to find the prey and because they are larger in size due to their general size or due to the pregnancy they get easily stuck in that region there is also risk of injury or death in the canals water receipts they are left stranded there is heat stroke there is human intervention and as i stated they enter the canal systems mainly post monsoon when water is is released in these canals for irrigation for the rabi crops now gangetic dolphins they have already been declared as the national aquatic animal yesterday they were also declared by the chief minister of uttar pradesh as the state aquatic animal for up now when it comes to the protection given to these the highest level of protection that can be given to any animal in india is provided to these gangetic dolphins as well they belong to the schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act 1972 at a global scale also they have been protected by both sites that is convention on international trade in endangered species they are in appendix 1 that means the highest possible protection any kind of trade is banned any kind of trade of gangetic dolphins it is completely banned at an international scale under convention on migratory species also they have been protected they have been given the highest level of protection against the under the appendix 1 what is the iucn status international union for conservation of nature they are endangered species and we need to keep working in order to protect their status protect them as they are the national aquatic animals of india now the last article is regarding the fight against malaria now recently a vaccine has been developed by the oxford university and it will be manufactured by the serum institute of india located in pune what is the name of this vaccine which can be asked in your prelims exam r21 matrix m okay so this is the name this is a malaria vaccine which has been recommended by the world health organization on october 2nd to be used for protection against malaria it is yet to be pre qualified but it has already been recommended that means this there have been trustworthy results from the various trials that have been conducted regarding this vaccine so it has been tested at five sites across four countries which have endemic malaria which are endemic to malaria what are these countries these are four african countries that is mali burkina faso kenya and tanzania definitely there are so many other countries where malaria is endemic to these are just the four countries where this vaccine it was tested now three countries that is the countries of nigeria ghana and burkina faso they have already approved the use of this vaccine for the children to immunize the children aged less than 36 months because the amount of efficacy the proven record of this vaccine to reduce the amount of disease amongst the children it was very high okay you can see it over here the efficacy of this vaccine even it is higher compared to the first malaria vaccine what was the first malaria vaccine rtss as01 commercially known as mosquirix okay now this was developed by the glaxo smith klein which is an international pharmaceutical company in collaboration with the walter reed army institute of research of usa it was recommended by world health organization back in 2021 this one has been recommended by world health organization in 2023 
the efficacy of this it is higher than the efficacy of mosquito drinks now apart from reducing the number of clinical malaria cases as seen during the field studies this vaccine the matrix m max vaccine it also reduces the load the parasitic load amongst the children now if the parasitic load reduces that means what will happen the load has reduced the number of virus number of parasites the number of protozoa early earlier if they were 100 now only 10 of them are there in the body so what will happen the danger of transmitting of the disease from one person to another person it will reduce because the number of parasites they have reduced so the frequency of the transmission of the disease will also reduce another advantage of this vaccine over the rtss mosquirix is that it is cheaper the cost is only 2 to 4 dollars per dose and sii the serum institute of india has stated that it will be producing around 100 million vaccines every year so that all the developed and the under developing countries who have malaria as a problem which has been causing so many cases so many deaths all across the world they can use this vaccine okay now please note that three vaccine doses you have to take three doses initially four weeks apart and then a booster shot at the end of 12 months so in total four vaccines a person needs to take in order to get the immunity against the malaria parasite so this is the last article just to summarize what all we studied first we talked about the itbp the indo tibetan border police force which has been protecting the indo china border since the year 1962 the act for the same came in the year 1992 and most of the people it is a specialized mountainous force and most of the members they are trained mountaineers second we talked about territorial army how it is a voluntary citizens army to assist the indian army in its various operations in the past few years it has supported indian army in the operation snow leopard it also helped the in the protection of the various oil rigs and the supply chains while the tensions in manipur increased okay territorial army in 1948 a act related to territorial army was passed in the indian parliament the third article was about gangetic dolphins how they are getting stuck in the canal system specifically the ganga ghagra canal system they are getting stuck mostly after the rainy season the, when they get stuck they are subjected to heat stroke they are left stranded and there might be certain miscreants who might try to harm these animals gangetic animals they are the national aquatic animal the state aquatic animal of uttar pradesh as well iu state iu cn status is endangered lastly we talked about malaria vaccine which a new malaria vaccine only the second malaria vaccine that has been recommended by the world health organization which has been created by university of oxford and it will be manufactured by the serum institute of india located in pune the cost is very less compared to the first vaccine that was mosquirix and even the efficacy of this vaccine is better than that of mosquirix the dose includes three vaccines four weeks apart and then at the end of 12 months one booster shot okay so that is about today's session here is the mains practice questions first the hamas attack on israel and the resultant retaliation comes at a time when both israel and west asia are undergoing sub some substantial changes elaborate so here you need to mention first palestine and israel they already are having bad relationship which is being milked by hamas israel is undergoing an inti- interior problems interior protests 
Third, Israel is trying to have better relations with Saudi Arabia. And fourth, USA, its attention has reduced in this region and it has increased in East Europe as well as Indo-Pacific. So you can mention all these points in this question. The second question is, research has shown that plastic has now been found even in the bodies of healthy human beings. In this background, discuss the menace of plastic pollution and its impact on environment and human health. This has also been adequately discussed. You can start with how the plastics, they were introduced in 1907 and now everything has a portion of plastic in itself. Then you can talk about how the aquatic areas, they are getting dumped with so much amount of plastic pollution every single day. Then the impact on the environment, land degradation, sea degradation, ecosystems, problems with the animals, human health, microplastics entering our body, entering the food chain. So you can mention all that in this particular question. Okay. So with that, we come to an end to this particular session. I hope you were able to understand everything. So with that, it is me, Pallavi Saksena, signing off. Thank you so much and have a very good day.